Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be discussing my worst books of 2018. And by the way, when I say worst, I mean worst, okay? These aren't terrible books. We're not bad. I don't think we're the worst books ever. I've only read 11 books this year. I know. Failure. In comparison with booktubers who read 20 books a week, a failure. But at the end of the day, do not compare yourself, we should not compare ourselves. Point being, I have slim pickings when it comes to worst books, but I have picked the two most kind of boring, unfulfilling and like meh. So first of all, we have here A Cottage by the Sea by Carl Matthews, and I gave this book 2.5 out of five stars. It was one of those books where I think I bought it in a library sale, like maybe two years ago for about 10 pence. And you know, the plot sort of sounded kind of interesting, not really. I bought it because how cheap it was. I would never buy this if it it was full price you know when you have books in your tbr on your bookshelf that you're not interested in anymore or maybe you never really were but you want to come and try you want to sift through your books you want to get through books on your shelf that's why i decided to read this and i got about half for fruit before i put it down actually for a few months and then i picked it up and forced myself to finish it just purely for the fact because at the start of december i realized wait a minute i need to read more books i haven't read any books this year so i thought this will be an easy way to add a book to my good reads list i only have half foot left to read like forcing myself to read like 100 pages every day or so putting it down halfway through doesn't always have to mean that the book is that bad in a sense it could be because in that time of my life i was not in the mood for reading anymore it was probably that and combined with the fact that this book isn't really the most amazing thing ever and i do gather this i'm not the target audience of this book i'm 19 years old these protagonists are probably 30 and it's more adult 30 year old life this book is about women called grace and her marriage of harry is not the best right now it's not doing great and she is invited down to a cottage by the sea owned by her best friend for a week on holiday you know with her two friends their significant others and we're all going to have a good time a holiday get away from their boring mundane lives so she's determined that on this holiday she's going to be able to fix up her marriage with harry and get things back on track now let's go through a few things of why this book maybe wasn't for me a book can be amazing despite these factors but this cover and the title how boring how sad it looks like something an old person would read i don't know why i picked it up this isn't appealing to me whatsoever and it definitely wasn't even appealing to me at the time once again it's probably because it was about 10 pence which is unfortunate i mean a cottage by the sea that sounds really bad that title sounds shockingly bad it does look like something an elderly person would be sitting and reading spoilers now if you're gonna read this book click forward to this time basically the cheating relationship on the main character was a bit unrealistic i think i think halfway through the book and beyond to the end the author started putting hints of her and flick are probably up to something there's probably some cheating going on there haha ha, lol to like set it up so it does seem more realistic to when it's like revealed but it seems very unrealistic like, and almost too convenient for it to be like oh so harry basically cheated me with flick so i can take no of it in, and it's all kind of good in a sense maybe it's just built up from the start i don't know I'm a bit less climatic at the end. The two main characters get together at the end. You know, they're meant to get together. Like, oh, all right, then. It's not like I was partially shipping them anyway. I was shipping Grace with the idea of like her going after something she truly wants in life because the fact that she was talking like, okay, I'll just go back to my old life, being the accountant, never being truly happy. I'll trips for years and years of marriage, not ever being happy, not ever truly going after what I want, taking the risk to get what I want. I was hefty, heavily like, no, I want her to do what will make her happy. I want her to leave her job. I want her to go down to live in Wales or whatever by the beach and do what she's passionate about. I want her to get with that guy if that's what's gonna make her happy and then we kissed at the end and i was like okay that's a book over and that's done great but i didn't get too attached to her characters but ella my best friend in the book who's pregnant i love grace and ella's friendship because grace cares about ella so much you can tell and really cares about protecting her and the baby and is like willing to do anything for her and she seriously worries and concerns for her this all takes place in a week like calm down it's a week and then always happens and she falls for noah and that's it done and then the cheating is unveiled like i don't know but yeah that is my thoughts on a cottage by the series next of all is your welcome universe by whitney something i can't remember the name and i borrowed this from the library actually i intentionally went to get it it's kind of forgettable it was maybe more boring or meh and i think i finished it like all right then that was okay next book you know wasn't the biggest deal to me i remember some specific details in the book for example my main character works at mcdonald's and we never find out my best friend's name yp yoga pants i read the synopsis of the book 
And honestly, what is the missing not for the book is like the main sort of plot or setup for what happens in the book and is really important to the book. So that's quite bad that I can't remember any of the main details of the story. I couldn't remember that she got expelled or went to another school and was offended. I didn't remember that. You know, sometimes you're not going to remember all the details of a book. Yeah, it can still be a great book at the time. And I remember more details about other books that I've read this year and books that I've read before that book that I found more better, you know, and I rated higher. I think I rated it like a 3 out of 5 at the time. Also, the summary of our synopsis of the book, I think our main reason why it might have attracted me is because I definitely remember hearing about it on Booktube first before going to and picking it up at the library and it could have been because it involves deaf culture as well which is something that I'm really interested in so that could have been the main reasons why I picked up the book in the first place but now we but now reading over some of the book it's not something that interests me at all it's something that I might not pick up but it happens to a lot of books that over time we first of all we just synopsis we think it's great we order it offline we keep it on our shelves for years plus we've grown to develop as readers and I definitely hope this year my tastes have changed and differed anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this video we're discussing my worst books of the year tell me down below what was one of your least favourite books of the year and why and I hope you enjoyed and my goodreads is linked down below if you want to go follow me because I love keeping up to date people on goodreads so I'll follow you back or whatever and i'll see you guys in my next video bye